Can you explain this shit behind me today, yo? Okay. And perpetual, perpetual balance with nature. Ain't it like 7.8 billion people on the earth? What they mean maintaining those under, under 500 million? How they gonna get the earth down to 7.8 billion people to 500 million? Hmm. Makes you wanna say, hmm, huh? Yeah, we ain't tripping. That's happening. 300 years old. Two. Probably 200. But look at what we found inside. What is this? I got some markings on it, but I don't know. Southern Ocean. This is the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star. Weird looking thing, isn't it? Uh, researchers describe it as uh, pretty large with 20 arms branching off of its strawberry like body. Lives in waters 200 to 3,000 feet deep. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube. Man, it feels so good to be back, man. Look, I missed y'all, but look, smash that like button, man, because look, watch these videos, get here before you know the videos get mysteriously get thrown off the internet, all this other stuff, man. But look, we're gonna continue to do what we do on this channel, man. It just feels so good to be back. Just know if you've been going through a tough time, we're going through this thing called life together, people. But look, uh, let's hop into this video, let's get it. Presented us with two gifts. One was a automatic translator that we could type into, and we could see their language on it, and they could see our language, and they could communicate that way. They they brought those with them. They also presented us with a gift to the people of Earth called the Yellow Book. Yes. The Yellow Book was an amazing piece of technology. It wasn't really a book. It was maybe it looked like a book, but really, as you opened it, images sprang out of it holographic images of what you were looking at and uh, giving you pictures that were of historical significance going back to 2000 BC. I love the description of this. And this particular piece of technology, does it exist today? Does the milita military still have? Yes, they have it, of course. And yeah. does it show into the future as well or only the past? As far as I know, it just discussed the past. Mm -mm. Um, my next question would actually be for Mr. Graves. Um, can you please explain to me in detail the event that occurred at Vandenberg Air Force Base? Certainly. Uh, in the 2003 time frame, uh, a large group of Boeing contractors were operating near one of the launch facilities at Vandenberg Air Force Base when they observed a very large 100-yard sided uh, red square uh, approach the base from the ocean and hover at low altitude over one of the launch facilities. Uh, this object remained for about 45 seconds or so before darting off over the mountains. Uh, there was a similar event within 24 hours later in the evening. Uh, this was a morning event, uh, I believe 8.45 in the morning. Later in the evening, post-sunset, uh, there were uh, reports of other sightings on base, uh, including some aggressive behaviors. Uh, these objects were approaching some of the security guards at rapid speeds uh, before darting off. Uh, and this is information that was received through one of the uh, witnesses that had approached me at American for Safe Aerospace. Was this documented in any official form, whether it was a police blotter? Yes, they had official documentation and records from the event that the witness uh, held over the years. And I'm not gonna ask you to do it right now for time reasons, but you'd be able to sketch what was witnessed, correct? And you've, have you seen that before on any other equipment and or during your flight time? I have not seen what they've described. Um, this object was uh, estimated to be almost the size of a football field, uh, and I have not seen anything personally in my luggage. Okay, and then um, another question on follow-up, referencing the gimbal video, go fast incident. Um... Never seen anything like it. Like what? What is that? Oh. What? That's wow. What the fuck is this? I'm literally in 60 seconds. Yo, you see how fast that was, though? Like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm running back. I'm running back. Yeah. Hey, look, and I don't think this, for me, I don't think this was drones, man. I don't, I don't think it was drones. What the fuck? 
What the fuck is this? I'm literally in 60 report seconds on in a draft report on UFOs. The Pentagon drones don't move that fast. Pentagon's expert warning about a possible mothership coming close to Earth. Stay with us. It may sound straight out of a movie, but the Pentagon and a Harvard scientist have collaborated on a new draft report questioning if we're alone in the universe and whether we've already seen evidence of life beyond Earth. Here's Gotti Schwartz. Move over, Chinese spy balloon, or whatever else U.S. fighter jet shot down last month. Tonight, out of Harvard University, a draft paper about mysterious flying objects sounding almost like science fiction. I think it's very likely that we are not the most intelligent civilization that ever existed. Renowned Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb teaming up with the new head of the Pentagon's UFO office, dubbed the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Together, they say that interstellar objects detected in space could be signs of extraterrestrial life, and that current sky mapping technology, like the James Webb Space Telescope, could miss such objects. It could have been a mother ship that released some probes in the habitable region around the sun. We have a visitor to our backyard. We should observe it at first. Professor Loeb now leading the charge to build better arrays of sensors to capture anomalies, but saying for now everything is hypothetical. And his paper is really meant to remind UFO hunters not to forget the laws of physics. As much as the reports from military personnel are intriguing and motivate my work right now, I want my instruments to tell me what is really happening. Meanwhile, more videos surfacing showing odd objects have been leaked to documentary UFO filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, who recently released pictures of an orb-shaped remosol and these images showing a cylinder flying over a rock. The Pentagon not commenting on the recent videos, but confirming prior of course not. released by Corbell had been filmed by service members. As for what they are, definitive explanations remain out of reach. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News. That's one to talk over. Man, they ain't willing to talk about this, man, until it's really about to pop off or something about to happen, man. Like, <laughs> you know, they <laughs> like this fake invasion they're going to do on y'all. Look, I'm, I'm just going to watch. Get my popcorn ready. <laughs> At this point. 145 top secret facilities that you know about. Well, you know, everyone talks about Area 51. That's an old one. A more state-of-the-art one is actually in the Dugway Proving Grounds, which is in Utah. I'm going to put a picture up of it right yeah. now. That's a big one at Dugway. It's underground, goes out. It's about 1,300 square miles. What's in there? All this stuff. Technologies, the craft, the operations. So what happened is that when he got to the site, there was about a six by six pod and they pulled it up on the ship. Uh, and it wasn't the whole craft. The whole craft had gone down, but apparently there was some sort of one molded thing. And there were four, I'm gonna use his language, little men that looked like the color of a Sicilian, but 39 inches tall, no hair, and also no external ears, no, no penna, flaps, very fine featured. But he, the reason he contacted me, and this is why this is so funny, you know, I've debriefed a thousand, over a thousand men like this. He said, I can't figure out how they got in and out of their uniforms. So they had a one-piece uniform. Now, no zipper and no buttons and no visible way they could get them out of this thing. And he says, how do they put them on? Hey, you know what be tripping me out, though, man, is when they be talking about the uh, the extraterrestrials and the way they look. And all I can, all I can think about is, man, look, I, I kind of see why disclosure don't happen because we petty as hell, y'all. Us as humanoids, does this look like this? Us, black, brown, blue, pink, whatever y'all are, we petty as hell. Cause you see the way to describe those things, man. And and and, and some of them like like defecate through their skin. Like, bro, we wouldn't we we wouldn't be okay with that. Cause look, we still got people tripping over uh, everybody's skin color. <laughs> you feel me? Like, it's a reason why they want to hide from us. We terrible. <laughs> we got to elevate. We got to elevate. Listen, I'm not a crazy conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theorist, but that is the sun going down over there. Am I, am I correct about that? Now look at this. Directly behind me. What is that? I'm not a flat earther by any means, but that and that can't both be the sun. What the hell is happening? There's nothing moving behind those clouds. It's just a big bright ball. 
that's, that's the sun going down in the west by the ocean. So what the fuck? Hey, that's why they want to keep us working and everything, man. Stressed out about how much money you ain't got and everything else, man. Because, look, they don't want you paying attention to the real things that matter. When will this planet come back? It's here. It's already in the, in the area. Oh, yes. Right now it's in okay. conjunction. It is behind the sun. It's coming up. It came up. To, in the direction towards the sun's, say, 730 position. Okay. Now, when it comes out from behind, it'll be around the 130 position. And Will we be able to see it then? <laughs> yeah. And when we see it, if you're not prepared, I mean, frankly, when we do see it, people are going to be standing out in the street. They're going to be pointing up at the sky. You'll be able to see it like that? Oh, yeah. You're going to see it. It's, it's a melancholia scenario. Jeez. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger because this thing is going to come around from behind the sun and cross over our orbit above us and ahead of us. And, you know, there's a gentleman, Bob Dean, no government one. whistleblower. Know. He's one of my heroes. I mean, I just love this guy. Yeah, good guy. And uh, I think in 2008 on Project Camelot, he made a prediction. He said, according to my sources, it is going to when we are going to be on the same side of the sun as the planet X system when it goes into its aphelion league. That's when it's going back south. Okay. And that is when it's really going to be jamming, you know. And jamming meaning doing fast. things to us? Uh, to the sun, to us. First off, let me just explain the planet X system. Okay. Nemesis is the dark star, all right? And it hasn't been visible for a very long time to the naked eye because it's shrouded in iron oxide dust. Okay. This is from its creation. And where would that be now, that binary star? That binary star is beyond the orbit of Jupiter, behind our sun. And that's why we can't see it. We can't see it. Now, uh, interestingly enough, it has. there are three planets that we talk about in our book. There could be more, but we're only talking about the major bodies that are going to present a problem for Earth All right. and be involved in the pole shift event. Okay. Now, these planets... <clears throat> talking about this stuff a long time ago, yeah. Are, the innermost one is Helion. Helion. And Helion is a gaseous, bright planet, sun inhabited. This is traveling with... Nemesis. Nibiru or whatever. Well, Nibiru is the third planet out. That's the one where the Anunnaki apparently came. That's from. right. Okay. There's there's Nemesis, the star. Right. Helion, Arbota, Nibiru. Helion has a moon which we named Harrington in name of this astronomer, okay. and we have a moon for Nibiru which we named Farada. They only for, have like one moon each. That's right. Okay. These two planets. Arbota does not have a moon. Our boda is inhabited by a slave species. Rachel, this is a great question. So about what happens when you go to the speed of light. I mean, this is a great, we love to ask this question in physics class. It's big fun. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace. Reminds you, I remember, yo, this is Bill Nye, the science guy. Is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. There's no place to throw your trash. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe not you, but your kids develop ways to mine our landfills. We throw away so much valuable stuff right now, especially raw materials. I may be wrong, of course, always may be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if that turns out to be economically reasonable. All this plastic that's really hard to create and hard to get it to break down, it has value. You know? Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. There's no place to throw your trash. And, and, and you know what's crazy, though? It's hard for some people to uh, accept that because, you know, um, you know, you've been indoctrinated, but it's crazy, though, when you start to learn this, it's a... Just think about it, man. Long time ago, they used to shoot rockets and take uh, astronauts to the moon, right? Which you never seen visually, ever. You never visually seen that. 
You thought you saw it, but you, they give you glimpses of BS that's easily disproved with today's technology. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, believe what you want to believe, though, man, but I don't, I don't, we, we ain't going out of there because they say we ain't even got the technology to even go back to the moon today. So how the, the math ain't mathing. Like, you, you get it, though? I, I shouldn't have to explain that anymore. Let's get back to the video. Two, one. That sounds <laughs> Sound familiar, huh? Even look at the Disney logo. It tells you. Hey, y'all be telling me to be jokes about this firmament and shit, right? Can you explain this shit behind me today, y'all? Yeah, I, I got an iPad. I had to hit the wide lens to get this whole motherfucker in the shot. You see the double rainbow? You see this one? It's light. Then you see the second one over my head? Look at that. Look, look at that. This is unfucking believable. I've never seen a rainbow all the way down to the fucking violet to clear in my life. When have you ever seen the end of the rainbow that cleared the violet spectrum? Look at the purple. That shit is clear as fuck on both sides. The public have no idea that the ISS is located in an underwater neutral buoyancy lab in Houston, Texas. From right here in Houston. From right here in Houston. The space station footage that they trick us with is not traveling at 17,500 miles per hour above your head. It's all being filmed here on Earth. An exact ISS replica underwater. Coincidence? It's a pretty simple process. Film your footage underwater, remove the water layer, add in your CGI earth layer, and cast your spell. We want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. The earth is a closed system. All right, guys, I got a standard map of the world here. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is look up flights from New Zealand to Argentina and uh, should be a pretty straightforward flight as we can see from the map here. But let's see what Google Flights has to say. Yeah, so yeah, you already things. know. New Zealand to Buenos Aires. For people that travel, you know, you know, you know, like why you take certain routes. <laughs> I'm gonna hit search. Found a flight here, two stops, LAX, JFK. Okay. Auckland to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to JFK, JFK to uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Huh, interesting. Let's look at the map again. So they want you to fly from here all the way up there and then all the way across the United States and then come back down to Argentina. Why do you think that is? Does that make any, any logical sense at all? 
Now what I have here is the standard flat earth model of, um, of the world, the Gleason's map. And here, this is New Zealand. According to that flight, we'd be going New Zealand to LAX, there, and then down. It's pretty much a straight line. Have you heard of such a thing as no-fly zones? For instance, you can't fly in certain areas near the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. The reasons being is because there are lands there that um, we're not supposed to know about. I'll give you one example. Sir Captain George Hubert Wilkins, a contemporary of Admiral Byrd, he flew beyond Antarctica 5,000 miles, according to his records, and he said that he found there many, many lands and peoples 5,000 miles beyond Antarctica. That's just one example of an explorer who has found lands that are not, on, not at all on any of our maps. They are excluded from all of our maps. That's why international pilots have such a thing as no-fly zone, because they don't want those lands to be discovered. Of what you are seeing, what you are being told, and what the facts are, because as Robert's going to share with you, and as I have done in many videos, there are things that are literally defying the physics of fire. Robert is an expert in trees and how they burn. He's looking for these clues. So take it away, Robert. All right, here we He's an expert in trees and how they burn. All right. I know. I know, y'all. You can see the screen okay? Absolutely. All right. Uh, this is seven years ago in Santa Rosa. I saw this picture on my uh, computer screen. And I first thing I saw is trees up and down every street and between houses in Santa Rosa, California, where the houses are not partially burned. They're turned to white right. ash like a crematorium. Look at the trees. But above all that, I saw the trees virtually untouched. And that didn't go well for me knowing my, uh, you know, my whole background in trees. And in this Santa Rosa Valley here up north, there's at least 75 or more different species of trees. Many of them are very flammable. Bruh, it burnt everything but the trees, though. Actually, in the yeah. Poison oak family, African sumac, Chinese pistachio, and I think one other, uh, California pepper. None of them burned. But yet, Jack in the Box on the left, McDonald's at the top and the gas station were just completely burned to the ground, leaving only metals. Somehow the Think fire crossed that. the six lane highway, uh, freeway 101. Didn't burn anything, just the buildings. Uh, any questions so far? You know, Robert, uh, this is so important what you're showing and it defies the physics of fire. Fire needs three things to burn. It needs fuel, it needs oxygen, and it needs heat. And if there was, we have the heat because we have these metals that are, are basically left over. We have the fuel, which are these trees, which you explained, are so flammable. So what we are seeing is not a pattern of a typical wildfire. There is no black ash. There is only this white ash. And house fires don't burn in this type of pattern. Hey, big big O out there doing it doing the thing out there. I'm telling you, but look, is the math mathing like? Come on, we shouldn't even have to talk about that. Y'all, let me know in the comments down below how y'all feel about that situation and the evidence that's being uh presented out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, do y'all think it's something fishy going on with that? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's see what the numbers say. I want to see what the masses have to say about this because that's very crazy. And what we do know too as well, man, that there is a, a lot more people missing than what is being reported. And they were stopping people from even exiting and leaving some of these situations. You feel me? So, And then we do know that the realtors was right on it like it was a pre plan thing like they already was like oh we want to take this lot of land right here so we're gonna be trying to buy these people out so i don't know man it's it, it, it's crazy out here man how y'all feel about it in the comments down below it's fishy or what it i'm gonna shut up this is seven feet tall on its side that's how big it is i've never seen a cavity in a eucalyptus tree for 33 years never a hole they compartmentalize their wounds very well Somehow this giant thing burned from the inside out and you see the metal 
fence post here to the right a little bit, there's actually one of those behind the stump, touching the stump. I start thinking how hot did that post get to do this kind of damage and for how long? And I have to remind everybody, this is September, October. It's cattle country. The cattle have eaten the grass down to a half inch. The hay truck has to show up to throw hay out to feed the cattle. There's no combustible materials on the ground. How could this thing burn from the inside out? Nobody stacked firewood against it and had a bonfire. It's almost impossible to burn this from the inside out with zero materials on the ground. Unless, of course, the water itself is activated electronically through this uh, microwave technology. I ain't gonna hold you. That's kind of concerning, bro. If 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 if, if mugs is around here, oh, getting attitudes and and zapping shit with micro beams and shit. You seen what that thing did to the tree? Imagine what you would look like. You would look like a damn raisin or some shit. Like you get hit with one of them damn. Don't hit me with a beam and turn me into a raisin. Goddamn. Like I, I give up. <laughs> How about y'all? Y'all gonna get beamed up if that if that was the only option? But look, I don't. On on a serious note, bro, I don't. I don't like that. I don't, y'all with me on that? I don't like that. We got, we got, we got to get, we got to start making, we got to make our own beams to, to fight back. Go, go Google how to, how to make me a beam tonight. <laughs> I, I'm joking. Don't do that, y'all. Yeah. This is the real reason why the Georgia Guidestones was demolished. Hold up, bro. Did you know that this thing, there's this hole right here? See that hole? It lines up with Polaris, the North Pole Star. All year, if you look at nighttime through up on the other side, that hole goes up and the North Pole Star is right in the middle. And it happens year round. Uh, this is actually proof that the Earth is a flat, stationary Earth. And that's why this, this costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to build, yeah. right? This is what they want for the New World Order, of course. Yeah. But the point is, they know what the Earth is, right? This thing wouldn't work if the Earth was spinning 1,000 miles an hour, shooting 66,000 miles per hour around the sun. It literally wouldn't work. Mm. It gets even worse, though, guys. On the side here, you can it's actually a calendar. So if you see this right here, this is a calendar. So if you look through this... You can track the sun every day throughout the year. There's a certain year where it will be right in the middle on the solstice. It's a calendar. Okay? They buried a time capsule over here. Yep. And it tells you all about the astronomical abilities of it, right? This is some crazy stuff. So, channel through stone indicates celestial pole. That's the little hole that you see the North Star through every day for all for thousands of years horizontal slot indicates annual travel of sun which is that right there which is how you get the solstice sun beam through the capstone marks noon time throughout the year there's a slit in the top if you when it's exactly 12 o'clock the sun will be right in the middle of it this is because the sky does the same thing and resets every year but this will always be accurate that's why i spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building it or it would be a waste of money right it would only be right one year or something so there you go, the Georgia Guidestones, not only was they basically the New World Order written in stone, it was also a complete astronomical clock. Obviously there's been a massive rise in people questioning the nature of reality and where they live and how they got here, so they've had to cover the tracks. Obviously people are exposing Agenda 21 of the United Nations and obviously what people are calling the New World Order which is basically exactly what was written on them stones. You want to know what's crazy about this is though? Like we got to really look at the bigger picture. It seems like the more that the internet has evolved and it got a lot bigger and it got a lot easier for us to share information 
once we ran into this information and we got a little bit wiser, right? They started to notice like, oh damn, they're really figuring this shit out. Why is it that they want to stop you from learning about this stuff? You know, because once you really start looking at stuff and put your feelings aside and really start looking for things that f for what it really is, you know, everybody's trying to figure out where they come from and like, why are we here? What's your life's purpose? And it leads you to these points sometimes, you know, like you don't be trying to go down a rabbit hole. You just be trying to peek in, but all of a sudden you all the way in here because you keep finding stuff that just is not what you learned in school. And they try to keep you away from it. Them things were destroyed for what? We know why. Everybody. Well, I've been hearing a lot about these Georgia guy stones. You know what I'm saying? I've been hearing a lot about, you know what I'm saying, the Georgia guy stones and the conspiracy theories and all that or whatever. So we live in Georgia now. I said, well, why not go visit the, uh, the Georgia guy stones and let me see for myself. You know what I'm saying? So I'm here to tell you. Look right here. You see it right here. Now these guy stones was in written in what uh, Russian, Chinese, English, Spanish, Arabic, Hebrew, Swahili, and Hindu. And it says right here. It says right here. Let these be the guy stones to an age of reason. The Georgia guy stone, Center Cluster erected March 22nd, 1980. So, what are they talking about? Let's go over here and see what they're talking about. This is the one that's written in English right here. We're going to read from the top. And it says, maintain humanity under 500 million and perpetual, perpetual balance with nature. What the fuck they mean by that? Ain't it like 7.8 billion people on the earth? What they mean maintaining those under, to five, under 500 million? How they going to get the earth down to 7.8 billion people to 500 million? Hmm. Makes you want to say, hmm, huh? It says, diet reproduction wisely improving fitness and diversity. What does that mean by guy reproduction wise? Planned Parenthood, abortions. Unite humanity with a living new language. What the fuck is that? You know, how they gonna do that? So many languages on earth. But they said they gonna do that, you know what I'm saying, by getting the population under 500 million. It's 7.8 billion people on earth. How is they gonna do all this? So, all the people that talk about some people conspiracy theories and all that shit right here, well, this is right here is written in stone. Right there, 500 million people. They want, they want to put the earth under 500 million people. It's seven point eight billion people on the earth. Now, this is written in English. I think this one is written, come over here. I think this one is written in, um... Uh, Pay attention to this, y'all. It's crazy. Or some of the Russian. And then after that, it's written like... Like, that, that's not fake. Like, at all. You know what I'm saying? Just like they said, we was crazy about the aliens. <laughs> I'm going to keep holding on to that one. Just because they, they said we was crazy. Nah, y'all just stupid. Now we can say that to them. Y'all stupid. But look, on some real stuff, though, like, it was written in stone. But some people will still say, oh, that's not true. But it, you know what I'm saying? Those are people, look, I don't even entertain it no more. I just, just move on. It ain't even worth it. We elevating people. Let's get it. Yeah, we ain't tripping. That's happening. I 
I wonder what that could be, you know? Like, I seen lights We're like that over here. Downtown Flint. Downtown. So check this out. That tree is clearly 300 years old. Two, probably 200. But look at what we found inside. What is this? I got some markings on it, but I don't know. That ain't natural. Well, it is natural, but... Anybody got any thoughts? Let us know. Leave some comments. Very curious, and we're very interested. Because Flint was founded in 1807. You know, so... How old is that thing? That don't make no sense, though. Founded in 1807. How old is that thing? Look, man, this land was here way, 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 way before... I don't want to dive deep into that, but that was just stupid, but I ain't going. Whatever, y'all. This thing's pretty big. It goes down pretty far. That predates all of us here. discover a new species lurking in the depths of the southern ocean this is the antarctic strawberry feather star weird looking thing isn't it uh, researchers describe it as uh, pretty large with 20 arms branching off of its strawberry like body lives in waters 200 to 3,000 feet deep scientists publish their findings in the invertebrate systematics journal don't that look like that thing that they described that was ripping people apart, like in those documents that got released? But that's crazy, though. Uh, Wow. That looked like something off that movie Alien, bro. Versus, versus Predator. That's crazy. Which is great reading, by the way, if you get some downtime. They say that they have been on uh, several research expeditions since 2008. What a weird-looking thing that is. And Absolutely. Imagine swimming in the water with that. Keep that in mind. Number three, right now, if you go look up images of Jesus in most of the pictures, he's going to have the sun in the background. Majority of the time, it's right behind his head. Hey, babies, I'm back with a quick one right now. Mama got some shit I need to do today, but I want to talk to y'all something about this Sunday. A lot of y'all dressing up, putting the wigs on, and putting on your best Sunday outfits, and going into these houses and worshiping it worshiping God today called the son of God you know there was a time they used to call us the people of the sun mm -hmm. then they said we were sun worshipers back in the day we wasn't worshiping no sun you done took the you capped it off and put it oh and now you got us all worshiping your son you know, back in the day, they told us that the body was the temple. That's your church and God living you. But now they want you to worship some God outside yourself, living up in the sky, sitting on the throne with a bunch of naked babies around it. Y'all seen them pictures they drew of God up there with all them babies with no clothes on but no mama around? It makes you wonder. Let me ask you something, baby. Let me tell you, as long as you don't think God lives in you and live outside you, they got to harness all your spiritual power, baby. The church is a harness and sin is to pull all your energy in. And your pastors and your priests, they all went to them schools of theology supposed to be. Well, who taught them about? Did they look like them? Who wrote the curriculum about all these organized religions that they both fed everybody? 
got you back down to these symptoms and they holidays, a lot of certain star systems and things. It's all spell work, baby. Do I believe the Bible? I believe there's a lot of truth in that book, but also some of us old girls know that book was used for a lot of spell casting. Full of astrology and numerology with your twelves and your threes and your sixes and your sevens. Mama gonna give you some breadcrumbs, but it's up to you babies to go ahead and do the homework. But I'm gonna ask you a question, all of y'all rocking your symbols of executions around your neck. Yeah. Because when Jesus was hanging on that cross, they had a bow to the left of him and to the right of him. Both with they was killing people that way. Symbol of execution. So let me ask you something. They would have killed that boy by hanging him. Would you all be wearing nooses around here? Mm-hmm. Makes you wonder. Crazy video right there. Hey, mama was spilling some tea. You feel me? Because real talk though, that's the way I like to do it too. I got a plethora of like knowledge and things I can talk about on this channel. I can break things down to you. I can break it down to you in word format. I can give you the documents and everything. But one thing though, you, when, when you evolving, bro, you have to really want to do this. You have to really be for it. You have to really be for the truth seeking, not for things that's gonna make you feel better and more comfortable about the situation, but the absolute truth. And I think the people that's on this channel, we do a very good job with uh, maintaining our integrity of who we are and we're going into the right direction. Because no matter what, how you think about a situation, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going I'm not going to be that person that's going to be like, oh, I don't like you because you believe this, you know, over another, you know. And we have to discern people that we want around us and people that we want to hold on to in life because, you know, our energy is not for everybody. We're here for particular missions and we're here on our own individual missions. And what I like to do is just get put it in your face on oh, pause, <laughs> give you the information and, you know, uh. And, 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 have, and, and y'all can have free will. Don't let nobody force feed you information. If you ain't ready for that type of information, if you ain't ready to go there, then don't be on that, you know? But look, I think we definitely do a dope job on here with helping each other. If I'm having a misstep on here, y'all put it in the comments, help me out. I read the comments. Dope community, man. And look, shout out, shout out to us. These videos is for us. So I want y'all to start hashtagging us in the comments down below. We built our own community and we strong. But look, I appreciate y'all. I'll be back for a crazy video that's even way, way better than this one tomorrow. So make sure y'all got y'all notifications on and let me know in the comments, should I go live on that video or should I just record it and give it to y'all in that format? Let me know, run this video up. I know, get this thing to 10,000 likes. I love y'all. Like I always say, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video and I'm out though. Bye.